let's take a look at switch same. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the switch statement. So the switch statement is sort of the, I don't know, like the cousin or the smaller brother of the if statement. It offers a, well, an interesting thing, an interesting functionality, but basically it's pretty much almost the same thing. Now I'm going to show this on an example, which is going to be the metal placement. So this is sort of, we can imagine we're in the Olympics now, let's go, the metal placement, and then maybe we have, you know, metal placement one is going to be gold, two is silver, three is bronze, and then anything else here, that's no metal for you, sorry to say. But we can type in switch, and then parentheses, and then the actual thing that we want to switch is going to go in here. So we're going to put in the metal placement right here, then we'll put in the curly bracket again, and once again, the second curly bracket is going to then generate at the end here. And inside of here, what we put in is a case. So we now have to specify each case that this variable can take, so each value, and then define what happens if that case happens. So we can say one, and then for example, say system out print line gold metal, something like this. And then very important at the very end here, we need to put in a break. So this always has to happen for every case. And now what I can just do is I can do duplicate to duplicate. So control D, control D, and then just change the cases here. So two and three. So this is now going to be silver metal. And this is now going to be the bronze metal. And then at the very end, what I will also put in is the default case. So this now happens when, well, basically uh, none of the other cases actually hit. So we can say system out print line and then say no metal and then put a break in here as well, just to be very sure that everything is fine. And now what you can see is that this of course has some advantages. If I now run this, we're gonna be greeted with a gold medal. So that's pretty cool. Now, the real issue here is that if you actually want something defined for, you know, a little bit of a space, so something for like 10 to 50, you would have to put in every case individually. That is sometimes the drawback of the switch statement. So usually, and this is just a rule of thumb, like a lot of things, usually the switch statement is most often used with enums. Now we haven't take a look, taken a look at the enums just yet, and we'll take a look at those in a little bit later. However, that's sort of where this is most prevalently used, simply because enums have a predefined number of elements usually, and there is more easy or it's easier just to use those in that case. Integers, okay, they're basically never used with floats, and I can tell you that don't use switch statement with floats, because it's not going to work, because of the, what I've mentioned, the floats sometimes round, will have some rounding errors, and then, you know, if you put in a 1f, that's, it's not going to be 1f, it's going to be 1.0000001, and then everything breaks, because the switch statement just doesn't support floats properly, so that's something to consider, otherwise, you will probably see this in someone else's code, maybe even if you don't want to use it. This is why it's very important to still have, you know, seen it and to still understand how it works. But overall, this is nothing too crazy. Um, it's basically, it's very similar to an if statement, just defining everything in here uh, individually. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials, just like this one. So, yeah.